Hi friends, we at GLC would like to take a quick moment to thank you for watching our programs on this platform. And we'd like to ask you for a little favor. Would you please go beneath this video and click the subscribe button? Did you know that by simply subscribing to the GLC YouTube channel, you can help us financially support the programs on this platform? You'll need to be signed into YouTube beforehand. But if not, simply click the subscribe button and YouTube will automatically walk you through the steps to sign in or to create an account. By taking these simple steps, you will not only ensure that you continue to receive our unique programming and gain instant access to the hundreds of videos we post, but more importantly, you'll also be telling YouTube that GLC's content is worth watching and promoting. Likewise, if you enjoyed a specific program, please click the thumbs up button below, which also helps inform YouTube that this is a program worth recommending. Finally, once you have logged in and subscribed, please click the notification bell below in order to receive announcements when we post new content. As usual, feel free to post your questions and comments in the comments section below. We always love hearing from our friends and viewers. Again, thank you for watching and supporting God's Learning Channel. We couldn't spread the message of the gospel without you. Be blessed, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Light of the Southwest. I'm Erica Spatia, and I'll be your host today. And True to heart, Light of the Southwest is always looking to see what the body of Yeshua is doing, what the body of Christ is doing, and we'd love learning about new ministries and what the Lord is, is doing in their lives. And so today we're highlighting a very special uh, ministry. We have uh, what was, was called Blessing Israeli Believers TV, and the founder, Dove Schwartz, is with us today. Dove, how are you? I'm blessed and I'm thankful. Awesome. It's so good to see you. Uh, we've talked a couple times over the phone, and uh, I knew when I spoke with you, with you over the phone that this was going to be an easy show because I think you are, you, you, your charisma just pours through you, even over the phone. May our Savior Jesus, Yeshua, our Savior, be praised. Amen. Amen. So you are in Texas. I know that you've at some point lived in Israel. You've done ministries in Africa. You've done so many different amazing things. Tell us what is new with BIB TV. Thank you, Eric. It's a blessing to be uh, back on Light of the Southwest. Uh, many years ago, I would uh, be a guest on Light of the Southwest and there with Tommy and Al. Yeah. Yes. And so it's such a blessing to be back with you. And to answer your question, uh, my my little Jewish mother lived in Israel. And in uh, 1995, I came back to faith in Messiah Yeshua after many years of drug addiction and really uh, great darkness. And in in his goodness, uh, our Savior Yeshua came looking for me and rescued me from myself. Oh, my sin. Yeah. Yeah, and so I had a second home in Israel until my little Jewish mother passed away in 2011. Oh, and there, I mem memory be for a blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, I had met many Israeli believers across the Promised Land and had great relationships r relationships with them. <clears throat> and I I started understanding some passages I'll share with you in a little bit. Uh, about how important it is to uh, support and help the Israeli believers in Messiah Yeshua. Less than half of 1% of Israelis are believers. And I'm so thankful the Lord gave me these relationships. And uh, my uh, our co-founder of the ministry, Blessing Israeli Believers, John McTurnan, and I saw a great need, according to the scriptures and according to the prophetic times we live in, to start a ministry to minister specifically to Israeli believers in Messiah Yeshua prayerfully and financially. They're getting out the gospel. They're making disciples. They're planting mess, uh, Messianic congregations, uh, saving babies from abortion, helping Holocaust survivors in the name of Messiah Yeshua, and much more. So we started that ministry in 2008, 
And then in 2015, my family moved to Israel and I thought we would be there until the rapture. Uh, but Adonai Yeshua had another plan and brought us back to Texas where we're conducting this ministry as like a bridge between the church in the nations and the Israeli believers in Messiah Yeshua that are our partners in the promised land. And, and recently even started a television program called BIB TV, where we focus on raising awareness and support for our Israeli believing partners in the land who are great light to the promised land at this time. That's amazing. Uh, and I know for us, we're excited at God's Learning Channel to be able to be hosting your TV show, which will be available for viewers to watch. Uh, it looks like Sundays at 6 p.m., Tuesdays at 10 a.m. So if you're watching and you're interested in watching BIB TV, please tune in. Again, that's Sunday and Tuesday with us and be able to watch. But also, I think people can go online and, and stream directly through your, your website. Uh, it looks like BIBTV.org. That's right. That's right. And I want to tell you, Eric, it's been amazing um, how uh, really special, special uh, brothers and sisters in Messiah who are partnering with us on this program. Uh, we have music on the program, even the intro of the program by uh, Joshua Aaron and Aaron Schust. Oh, wow. Great. Who are heartily behind this effort. Oh, I love, um, I love those guys. I, I, I was actually able to go to one of their concerts in Israel when I was there last and, uh, pretty amazing to be able to partner with those guys. That's a powerhouse of music and worship. Absolutely, Eric. Uh, there's a real special night of worship uh, in uh, the old city in Jerusalem that's become a very popular a DVD or download. Um, my wife and my son and I were with a our, one of our partnering ministries that partners that helps Holocaust survivors. And we were, um, they were Aaron, uh, Joshua Aaron's guests that night. We were there with them. My son produces some of Joshua Aaron's uh, music videos. And he's also the producer of this television program, BIB TV. And, and so uh, we had, for a full program, we had Aaron Schust sharing his testimony about how the Lord showed him how important it is to bless Israel. And um, Joshua uh, Aaron wants to be a, a guest speaking on the program, but his participation is with those powerful music videos that you mentioned also. Yeah, it's really exciting. So sharing the light of Yeshua in Israel to Israelis, is it, are you, do, are you confronted with pushback maybe from somebody who thinks that maybe you're trying to proselytize or convert or anything like that. How are you? Are you? Is your ministry facing those pushbacks, or um, are you kind of not on the forefront of that? And you're really just trying to share the love, and we don't we don't kind of join into those conversations. How how does that work for you, Dub? Well, you know, um, I I know that I know that for example, Jews for Jesus um, have a very front lines. Um, way of sharing the gospel that offends some people. But I want to tell you what Moish Rosen said, and it's very important. He said one of the greatest expressions of anti-Semitism is to withhold the gospel of Israel's Messiah from the Jewish people. Right. And I think that's very profound. Now, there's different ways to do that. But instead of um, us dictating the way is our Israeli partners do it, we support them. And we, were, we support them who are out in the front lines with the gospel. We support the other ones that are uh, more of a humanitarian aid and being, yeah. a light, being a light to our dear, uh, precious Israeli friends. And so we don't dictate the methods by which they are the light. What we do is we prayerfully and financially partner with them. You know, think of this, Eric, that so much money, so much money and prayer support 
goes to unbelieving Israeli organizations, and that's okay. There's many ways to bless Israel. Amen. Right. Amen. And so, um, I, 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 where the scriptures allow me to, I don't want to be either or. I want to be both and. Yeah. Do you see what I yeah. mean? Sure. And, and so, um, we have found that one of the best ways to bless Israel for those who have a heart to do so, and we thank our Savior, Messiah Yeshua, for those who do, one of the best ways to bless Israel is to bless Israeli believers in Messiah Yeshua. And some of them do get pushed back just because of their identity in the Lord. But guess what? You know, before I knew the Lord, I pushed back pretty good myself. How about yeah. you? Amen. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we all did. We all did. And we we all uh, have found uh, Yeshua, salvation uh, right. th through the gospel. And I, for me, I think it's interesting. I think sometimes people ask these questions and they face us with this dichotomy. I think maybe it's a little bit false or a little bit one-sided because there's nothing more Jewish than believing in the, the Jewish Messiah. And Can so I to, to that for a second, yes. uh, um, we aren't as believers in Messiah Yeshua who, who once were not, we're not trying to convert Israelis or Jews to another religion. Yeah. We ourselves know that we were in darkness and now we have the light of the world. Right. Yes, Israel's Messiah. So I'm thankful I was converted from darkness to light. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so that's what we want for um, our Israeli. Uh, dear friends, and, and uh, you know, I love Texas because of all the Texasisms. <laughs> I love it. What a friend of mine said with regard to being pushy with the gospel or, uh, you know, doing more harm than good. And he put it this way. He said, well, you know, there ain't no use in tugging on green apples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> and so um, we want to use wisdom and know and understand where anybody is that we're sharing the gospel with. And that's where in Colossians, uh, the, the great apostle Paul, he said that we should be ready with, um, with salt and, and grace. Well, the salt is the truth that can sting a little bit. And the grace is recognizing where someone is and, and using wisdom and how, just like we would want them to share with us. You know, there's yeah. times where I needed a little more grace. There's times where I needed a little more salt. And the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, gives us wisdom and how to answer each one or speak to each one. We see that in Colossians chapter 4. Right. Yeah. You know, when you said the salt and light, it reminds me of the Passover when uh, we take a little bit of the horseradish. Yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty bad, but we mix it with... Uh, Mix it with that uh, apple uh, and cinnamon, and uh, there you go. You found a little bit of, of another picture of the same thing. But that is awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about the format of BIB t TV? What would our what would our audience expect to see when they tune into your show? I'm so glad you asked, Eric. And so um, with this program, and and I have other ministry expressions of the Lord's calling. On, on our life. But with this one, it's very unique in that we want to, as much as is possible on every program to have an Israeli believer as a guest on our program. Oh, cool. And we've been real successful at that. And the only time, for example, that we haven't done that, we had Aaron Schuess who did the whole program, but he was talking about how the Lord gave him his, our father's love for Israel, and it was like a special program. But in most programs, we have um, at least one, sometimes two, Israeli believers. And then I also share with our viewers, I do a little bit of teaching, um, usually, on why it's so important to believe in Israel and drill down uh, and why it's so important to bless Israeli believers in Messiah Yeshua. Also, uh, with every program, we have uh, a music video. I'll tell you what, I watch each program for quality control. And so I kind of try to zip through it because I've already done the program. My, my uh, producers already produced it. But when we get to those music videos, it's hard not to watch the whole thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so we have Aaron Shears videos. We have uh, Sarah Lieberman videos. We have Joshua Aaron music videos. And um, it's really it's really exciting. Like I said, the lead off from the program is an exciting. I love watching our intro for that program. If you haven't seen it yet, you're really going to be blessed. If you care about Israel and you love the things that, that our father's doing right now on the earth, you'll love the intro to this program. And um, and uh, we have also other guests like the co-founder of uh, Blessing Israeli Believers, John McTernan, is a Bible prophecy uh, expert. He's written lots of books on, on Bible prophecy. And he didn't even think about there being Israeli believers. The Lord let me introduce him to the understanding there are believers in the land and he went with me through the land. And, and when he saw what the Lord was doing with them, he and I both agreed we need to start a ministry called Blessing Israeli Believers. Well, he's on the program with prophetic updates of these times. I'll tell you what, you talk about variety. It's really exciting. That is so cool. I know when I went to Israel for the first time, just visiting the land physically, it changed my life. It changed my perspective on a lot of different things, things that I thought I understood and knew. Uh, but yes, uh, seeing uh, uh, seeing the land, interacting with the people, um, and just learning, you know, in Jeremiah 31, I think I, I'd say it like this, Jeremiah 31, 31, it says, you know, this is who the new covenant's to. And it says, this is to the house of Judah and the house of Israel. Um, and so when I went back home to my, you know, New Testament church, my believing church, I, I often said, you know, who are you in that formula? Are you Judah or are you Israel? Um, because you have to be one of those two, according to Jeremiah 31, 31, if that's who the new covenants to. And so then we're either grafted into which house, but then in the end, both are given this new covenant. And so I felt at more close to uh, Judah, closer to Israel than I ever had before. And um, it is a land that will consume you. It says uh, in, when, when Moses goes in to take the land, it says, uh, um, I'll give it to you little by little, lest you be consumed. But I think there's a deeper meaning here, not just that the beast of the field will overtake you, but I think once you get to Israel, there is a part of it that it consumes your attention. It consumes you because I think it's the heart and the apple of the eye of our father. And if our heart is to follow Yeshua, follow the father, uh, we will, and I think naturally have this love for Israel. And, and I love how you're highlighting that. Well, I'm so thankful to get to share with you and our viewers what the Lord's doing with this ministry and, um, you know, I, I go to Africa. I've been going to Africa since 2006. I've ministered in 10 African countries. And we are focusing on a few African countries right now in our ministry. So I do these pastor conferences. And I ask the pastors, let's just start off with, I'm going to ask you a question. With whom did the Lord make the new covenant? And they have all these different answers. And I say, well, let's see what your Bible says. And we go to Jeremiah 31. And when they read it, they look at it like, wow, I know this is my Bible. I brought it with me today. It's in my lap, but I've never seen that before. <laughs> and the Lord made the new covenant with Israel and Judah, meaning the, the two tribes or the two kingdoms, Israel in the north, Judah in the south, and then sent the gospel to the nations that were grafted in to the new covenant with a reunited uh, Israel that is one country with 12 tribes. And so it will be through the millennial reign of Messiah when he returns. And so uh, this gospel's gone out to the nations. We see in Ephesians chapter 2 and Romans chapter 11 that the predominantly these days Gentile church was grafted in to that new covenant that the Lord made with Israel. And one of the things we do with these African pastors and others uh, in the nations is we show them how important it is to bless Israel. So here's what I'd like to do, Eric, with your permission. I'd like to share a few quick verses uh, that I use share with people to help them know we should bless Israel. And many of the people that will watch this program, it'll be like preaching to the choir. Wouldn't you agree? I think so a little bit. But, hey, there's always somebody who's tuning in right now through the Holy Spirit that needs to hear your message. And regardless, the choir needs practice, too, right? Amen. <laughs> 
So, of course, in Genesis 12, 3, uh, we're making seven pro- uh, covenant promises with Abram, later on Abraham, the spiritual uh, earthly father of our faith, which we find in Galatians 3. Well, in Genesis 12, 3, the Lord says that I'll bless you, those who bless you and curse those who curse you. Later on, he hands that covenant, those covenant promises the Lord does to Isaac, not Ishmael, and then later to Jacob, not Esau. And in Genesis, he changes Jacob's name to Israel, right? But then in Exodus 4, verses like 22 and 23, the Lord through Moses warns Pharaoh. And he says, because you will, I'm paraphrasing, because you won't let my firstborn son Israel go, I'll kill your firstborn. I think that demonstrates he takes Israel pretty seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and then in Psalm 122, verse 6, he says, the Lord says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. And then I've heard people say, yeah, but that's all Old Testament and blah, blah, blah. And I say, well, Romans 10.1, is that the New Testament? Well, the Holy Spirit is crying out through the Apostle Paul in ink. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God to God for Israel is that they may be saved, saved by believing in Messiah Yeshua. And so... Um, those places, what I say to my uh, African friends at the pastors and others when I do these conferences and others I share with, I say, well, are you blessing Israel? What are you doing to bless Israel? Do you see Israel as God's firstborn son? Because that's how he sees Israel. And if he sees something a certain way, that's the way it is. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's not up for debate as far as he, the Lord doesn't feel like his way is only the best way. He feels like his way is the only way. Right. Yes. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and so um, then I say to my, you know, the prosperity movement is sweeping like a, a nasty wildfire across Africa. And I say, uh-huh. well, those of you who say you're seeking after prosperity. When was the last time because of your love for Jerusalem, you prayed for the peace of Jerusalem? Because if we do these things and we have a heart for Israel to be saved, the lost sheep of Israel to be saved, and we love them like God loves them right where they are, and we bless them right where they are like the Lord blesses them. Yeah, but what about their sin? And what about this? And what about the other? That's God's business. That's not my business. My business is to bless them and to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and to love them. Amen? Amen. And that's that's my work. The other things are above my pay grade that are God's to do. And and so uh, beyond that, there's then passages that speak of the Israeli believers. Uh, can I show our viewers some of those? Yes, things? show us. We, we, we want to see it. Okay, <laughs> so think of this, Eric and everybody. Israel has always had even a few Jewish people, even after the 70 AD dispersion where the Romans came in to disperse the Jews to the nations. And then in 135 AD, where they finished the job and uh, the Romans did and kicked most of the rest of Israel to the nations. But there's always been a small Jewish remnant there the whole way. Yes. Yeah. But by and large, by and large, the Jewish people have been in the nations. And there was this ministry Paul did that was out of existence. I'm going to read it from Romans 15, 26 and 27. Okay. For it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints. See, there's the Israeli believers, the saints who are in Jerusalem. It pleased them indeed. They are their debtors for if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things. Their duty is also to minister them to them in material things. Hmm. And what, Man, what interesting. Paul, by the Spirit, by the Ruach HaKadosh, by the Holy Spirit, was telling the believers in the predominantly Gentile churches in the nations is, you receive the gospel from the Israeli believers in Jerusalem. Wow. And the gospel came out of Jerusalem. Right. That's where our Savior paid for our sins on the cross, the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb, rose from the grave from Jerusalem, right? right? And the gospel goes out from there. 
And so it's the responsibility of those in the nations who are believers to support the poor saints in Jerusalem. And I believe our Heavenly Father would smile on us even saying, and extending that to the nation of Israel as he's bringing the Jewish people back. And now this ministry that was out of existence is back. Yeah. Our time after like 1800 years. Right. Isn't that something? That is very awesome. You know, that's all that passage right there. Blessing Israeli believers. That's it. That's Isn't where you, that's where you came up with the name, maybe. <laughs> maybe yes. that was the Norman revelation. Came up with the, with the name because we kept talking about we've got to bless these Israeli believers. We've got to bless these Israeli believers. There's other passages also. Um, in Galatians 6, uh, we see that God's word says, the word of Elohim, God's word says that we should do good to all but especially to those of the household of faith in Messiah and Shul. Amen. 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 So I go to a Messianic congregation here in Texas, and, uh, you know, our teachers often bring up the, uh, this, you know, some of the, the, from the writings of the sages, from the Jewish perspective. And one of the things that they talk about is that, um, you know, they be, uh, there's a belief that from the nations will come the materials to build the third temple. The uh, you know, there like there are there's this huge blessing that will come from the nations to the people of the book. And I think uh, I think of the red heifers coming from Texas. You know that 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 could be uh, paving the way towards uh, you know uh, materials like that. Uh, of course, not only financial blessing, but like there are, uh, you know, how much, how much of Israel's economy is from the nations through tourism and other things. Uh, and I feel like uh, since October 7th, a lot of those, those financial blessings have been put on hold because people are maybe afraid to go to the land but how do we still bless Israel when we maybe can't go there right now? And getting involved with your ministry is, is one way to do that. Um, so if our if our community wants to get involved with uh, blessing Israeli believers, how do we do that? And, and what are some of those avenues that we can do to get involved with your ministry? Doug? I'm going to share the practical way they could go now to do that. And then I'm going to share with you what some of our Israeli believers Believing partners are doing, okay? okay. Yes. Uh, you can go to BIBTV.org. That's BIBTV.org to our website. And then you'll see some, not all, but some of our uh, Israeli believing partners and what some of some of what they're doing. And there's a donate page that you can go to. And then let me share with you some of the exhilarating, exciting things we're getting to partner with. Um, we have uh, in... The Golan Heights, and the reason I mentioned the Golan is because it's in the news right now. Uh, the Golan Heights, uh, there's a town that one of our long-term Israeli believing partners, we've been friends with him and his family for 20 years. We've watched their children grow up. We've uh, partnered with them in many ways and spent much time with them uh, in ministry and just hanging out and barbecuing on our patio, and they're close friends. But there's Pastor Ezra and the Golan and they just, their town just ate many missiles from Hezbollah that mm -hmm. were fired at them. Many missiles hit their town, and only one Israeli was a little bit injured. And none of this is, a, this town is not evacuated. So it's full of all of its uh, population. Yeah. But, uh, but none of them were killed at, or seriously injured. Uh, from this last attack in Katsreen that was in the, has been all over the news. And we've been getting videos. And when you watch our program, you'll see videos of, of uh, rockets and, and smoke coming up and fires from them, from people, who, our partners who are living in those towns. Yes. And what they're doing is, with the resources, they're buying pizzas and gear and things for the IDF soldiers and taking it personally to them. And now they're restricted. They have to, the soldiers have to come down the mountain to where they are because they're not allowed up on the mountain because of how dangerous it is. They were taking the meals up the mountain right to them. 
uh, in the Golan. And, and so they're, they're just showing the love of Messiah, and they're telling them who these, these things come from, uh, believers uh, in Messiah Yeshua. Uh, and they're seeing the love of Messiah from we who are here in America and other nations and our Israeli-believing partners on the ground there. Yeah. And they smile and they laugh. You know, laughter doeth good like a medicine. <laughs> yeah. And they can use some medicine in the midst of these missiles and trouble and threats. And so that's just one example. Um, in, in Jerusalem, uh, the uh, we just got a report recently at, uh, from uh, Pastor Oded Shoshani, one of the biggest Messianic congregations in Jerusalem. Uh, and he's a close friend also, as close friend, family friend for 20 years. Uh, and... Um, he's on the program frequently. You'll hear from him if you watch the program and you'll, you'll uh, see him on our website. So anyhow, uh, with regard to that, we, the soldiers are off to war, leaving the wives and children. Some of our BIB funds that were sent help the wives pay for uh, babysitters for, for cleaning their homes and their yards and things like that and getting food for them and, and special help for them. Uh, we just had a testimony of that recently is why I'm telling you that. Yeah. Um, and, and down uh, in uh, Ashkelon, uh, we have uh, one of our uh, drug rehab uh, gospel machine friends. And he's just loving these precious souls who desperately he has uh, soup kitchens and food kitchens. And they've expanded out, expanded beyond the down and out and poor needy to others as well who are, are needy in their minds and in their hearts from all of the trouble and trauma they've been experiencing. So they've got, they'll take hundreds, thousands of dollars worth of food down there to them and just love them. You wow. Know? Yeah. That's so these crazy. are just a few examples of the many things I could go on and on and on, but there's, that's, those are just a few examples that have recently come up in, on our TV interviews. Yeah. Right. Man, the, the power of, of the, our Messiah He's incredible. I mean, uh, there's no other, there's no other person like Yeshua. Hallelujah. He can go from infinite light Hallelujah. into the darkest pits Hallelujah. and and free the captives. Hallelujah. He can come down and set us free and, and by the power of His name. And it is so encouraging to see you reaching out, blessing Israel in this manner. And then putting it on TV so that we can all watch it and, and kind of learn what's going on. I'm excited to start watching your program. Oh, and, yeah. and again, I know uh, for you who are watching here, I'll say it again. It's Sundays at 6 p.m. And we have Tuesdays at 10 a.m. here on God's Learning Channel. Tune in to see what's going on. But the conversation's not over. We're going to probably say that again, just so we drive it home at the end of the show. But that's amazing. Uh, I know when I went to Israel, like some of the ministries that are Christian believer, uh, or they're, they're, they're believers in Israel, but, you know, their ministries aren't preaching and they're not out there, uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know, serving, which I think in a way that we normally would see, but one of the ministries that are out there, and I don't know if you've already done an interview with them, but uh, it was uh, Jordan Marcelino's uh, Beautiful Land Initiative. His ministry is just picking up trash and loving the land. It says, hey, this is the, this is the land of Israel, and uh, this is the promised land. This is the land in which our, our God, it's the apple of his eye. So he just goes around and cleans it up, leaves it better than when he first came. And uh, I think that ministry is so ama amazing because it speaks volumes to, to everyone. And all you have to do is look at what the, the land looks like. So that, that's one ministry. I think uh, if you haven't had him on the show, you definitely should speak with him. Well, not only did I interview Jordan at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention uh, earlier this year, let me tell you a little story. You ready? Yeah. It's true testimony. Uh, Jordan and his wife and children lived right around the corner from us in a little village in northern Israel. Okay? Mm hmm And uh, they were talking about starting this ministry 
called BLI. And we were hanging out with them. And here's what had happened. About an hour before we went to their home and he was telling us about this idea he had, someone had handed us a little brown paper bag full of Israeli cash for our ministry. And it was like a stack of, of paper of money. They handed me a little bag of money. So this is for your ministry. And so we had that bag of money. And, and Jordan's telling us how much money he needs to start his ministry and get a ministry logo made and do these other things. And they didn't have the money for it. And what do we, we're, we're going to pray about this. And so we listened to them. We spent some time with them. We went back out to our car and, the, and my wife said, you need to give them that bag of money. I said, well, I'll pray about that. So I went to start the car. It wouldn't start. <laughs> I kept trying to start the car. She said, that car's not, our car's not going to start until you take them that bag of money. I mean, she <laughs> wouldn't do it. I took them the bag of money and, and Jordan's wife just went, right. I got wow. back in the car and started right up. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is amazing. <laughs> That and they amazing. used that. That was the launch of their logo and some of their ministry things. That is great. That's the power. That's the power of, of Yeshua. Hallelujah. My that's, wife has a lot of wisdom for me. That's great. That's yeah, awesome. Well, as far as, uh, you know, what you're doing, can you tell us about, like, how you got the vision for BLI TV and how B-I-B-T-B. the Lord. B-I-B TV. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, you know, I know, I know. I got that. I got that. That was your acronyms, me. That... You're getting your acronyms mixed up. <laughs> Blessing Israeli Believers, B-I-B TV. How did, how did the Lord give you that vision and how did you just get it started? Uh, did it start with a YouTube channel at first or did you, know, you have. The TV program. The TV program okay. and, the, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay. So so with regard to the ministry, um, when my co- uh, our co-founder and, and ministry partner, John McTurnan, when he saw what I was telling him about the Israeli leaders that I had been knowing for years, and um, we just we just saw uh, scenarios, we experienced scenarios that the Lord showed us. Now is the time to start a ministry called Blessing Israeli Believers. That's one thing. I'm yeah. sorry if you're hearing this ding on my computer of incoming things. Please forgive me. My producer's not with me today, so I don't know how to turn it off. So, <laughs> <laughs> so just keeping it real here. So anyhow, with regard to Blessing Israeli Believers television, I'll tell you uh, about it. I have another television program also. And uh, I was talking to uh, my agent who helps uh, help me get involved with different television networks. And I was exp- telling him about blessing Israeli believers in greater detail. And he looked at me and he said, well, blessing Israeli believers needs its own television program. And he said, what ministry has two different television programs at the same time on Christian TV? And he looked at me and kind of chuckled and he said, well, I guess you do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> and and so I prayed about it. I talked to our co-founding partner, John, and uh, and some of my other prayer partners. And we just really felt like, yes, we need to do this. And our producer, and my producer, who is my son, he doesn't need any extra work right now. <laughs> we keep him real busy. And he was very excited about it. And he also, he has these really uh, close relationships. He has closer relationships with some Israeli believers than I do, and vice versa. I have closer relationships with some of them than he does. And so when we put that together, that's where we came up with Joshua Aaron, Aaron Schust, Pastor Oded Shoshani, our ministry partner, uh, Pastor uh, Bikas down in Ashkelon, Pastor Ezra up in the Golan, and many, Biad Chaim, pro-life in Israel, and it just goes on and on. We've got this great uh, depth of Israeli believing friends and partners, and they're excited about contributing. And with something like this, it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort, especially as busy as we are already. 
but it just seamlessly comes together. Like you mentioned earlier, only our Messiah Yeshua can do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I remember in 2016, I wanted to go, I went to the Galilee and we wanted to get onto one of the Jesus boats, but one of those, all those that were sort of down by the docks, they were all sold out. And uh, a person came by and handed us a, a number and they said, why don't you do, try calling this guy? He has his own boat. And Daniel? I just, and yeah. And, and, uh, he, this gentleman, uh, Daniel, shows up with his boat. Uh, we go out, and it was a, it was this amazing connection with the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, with Yeshua. Amen. All be all because it was you know, twenty four of the thirty two miracles Yeshua did is in and around the Sea of Galilee and those cities around it. Such a blessed area, uh, by Tiberius, and so by the end of this. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm trying to create the story where everything sort of co comes together. At the end, we're coming to the end uh, of the boat. We are going back towards the dock. And he, Daniel's like, I want you to connect with my friend. Um, and so by the time we got off the dock, a gentleman by the name of Heim Singerman comes and, and meets us and comes and shows us his ministry. Heim introduced us to then uh, Jordan. Uh, Jordan then introduces us and invites us to the concert to meet Joshua Aaron, and Aaron Schust is there as well. Uh, Hananya Naftali walks in. I got to meet Hananya and his grandmother. Uh, only, only believers. I don't know. It just felt like a huge hug from a from our family. Very well said. And and you never you never felt alone. You felt like you were right at home. And everybody is like, hey, um, let's meet for lunch tomorrow. Uh, and it was just oh, yeah. this amazing love uh, that was so, so uh, immersed. You just were immersed in the spirit and the love of Hashem, the love of God. And you were just, this is what we're supposed to do. And I think it's encouraged me to even do what I'm doing is let's just spread the love, the light of the Southwest. We want to share this love. I think there's a special connection between Texas and Israel. I don't know yes. why. There's a very special connection there, uh, more the, more so than any other state that I can think of, maybe New York, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, I think it's amazing, and I think uh, what you're called to do is, is is great. Tell us more. Well, I just love the names of people you mentioned because I love those people, um, Chaim and Ruti. Uh, Singerman, our friends as well, and um, Ananya Naftali. Uh, we've he's been on the program now about four times. We just inter we just uh, aired a couple of his interviews over the last few weeks or month or so. So um, we're all swimming in the same stream of life. Yeah, and I'm very thankful to to hear that and uh, bear witness with your friends there that you just mentioned. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm so excited about uh, this program, and I'm glad that our viewers are hearing and seeing these things now. And I want to remind them also about the time: Sunday nights at 6 p.m. and Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Uh, BIB TV is where you will see and hear these things. I'd love to get a note from you. Our contact information. Uh, of course, is there. And also, uh, after you see the program, you'll see our contact information there as well. Um, I'd love to hear hear from you. We watched you on Live the Southwest, and, and and you were right. We enjoyed the program. And, and uh, you know, when, when you build something up like I'm building up our program and, and you're helping me do that, it better be good. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I have confidence in the Messiah Yeshua. And and the product he's helped us to pre present to people. But I think I think everyone who watches it with the heart for the Lord is going to be thoroughly blessed. I am. Like I said, when I watch, I do quality control, all kinds of production stuff and all kinds of ministry stuff all through the week. So it's, it, I, I fight. I fight the, yeah, 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 I got to do this, do that, do the other. Because either the, these are the things of our holy thought, holy heavenly father, our holy Messiah, Yeshua, the holy Holy Spirit, his name is holy. Um, and that's easy to do, to stay in that flow of the Holy Spirit. 
when I'm watching and even critiquing and, and um, quality controlling our television program that's ready to air. I really love watching it. I really yeah. do. I, I love how um, the spirit is leading so many ministries, yours included. Um, but, you know, as darkness rises and our secular news, our secular channels in the world, they give all the highlight for the darkness, uh, the pro Hamas uh, end of the spectrum and the destruction and how, how truth is twisted uh, as, as the darkness is given that platform um, we're balancing the scales because Hashem, God has given us these platforms and these channels to share, to shed the light and to bring balance back to the world. <laughs> and I hope, and I pray that your, your, your channel is just going to shine and go like wildfire wherever it goes into every home, into every heart, into every mind. And, uh, may, May the Spirit just bless you tremendously for the great works that you're doing. Thank you so much. I received that. And you know the old saying, for your lips, from your lips to heaven's ears, our Heavenly Father's ears, yes. Amen. Uh, and, and also, I would say that our guests, like Hanania Naftali, yeah. are, are really a, uh, a voice in this time. That's right. That, that, that really speaks light into the darkness and our partners on the ground there in Israel also are doing yeah. the same uh, in the midst of great trauma. Uh, Israel, I, when I lived there, it was before this time. We were, we were prepared for war. We were constantly preparing for war all the time. And right. there were skirmishes. I mean, we lived on the top of a mountainside and you walk out the back door and there's 95% of the Sea of Galilee the Canaret. And when people who hadn't been there before would visit and go out that back door, they would go, <gasps> it was like living in a postcard. But also I was in Nigeria preaching and my wife called me because right outside our back window there over the lake, an, an Iranian drone had just been shot down and it was on Fox news and CNN, all that stuff. Right outside our, our door. Oh wow! And uh, it looked like that. Of course, it was miles away, but it was right in terms of being up in the air where our house was. You really could look almost straight at it, and there the smoke was and all that. So we were always constantly preparing for skir uh, for a war, and there was skir skirmishes. But now that it's here, now that it's here, uh, Israelis, there's a lot of trauma and depression and. And being at wit's end, and I'm thankful that our believing partners and other believers that aren't our partners, of course, are there in the land to be a light, to be a comfort. You know, Isaiah 40 says, comfort, comfort my people, says your Elohim. Amen. Amen. And so they're doing that. And also, I think we have to get strong in the grace that is in Messiah Yeshua about the things you spoke about, the darkness and the trouble. And I'm kind of looking at it more like this. The devil's people have their work to do, and we have ours. Yes. Yes? Yep. yep. And so um, uh, our, our Savior, who watches over Israel, who keeps Israel, neither slumbers nor sleeps. Yes. And he's always with us. He's Emmanuel, Elohim with us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And so uh, if if um, if he be for us, who can be against us? And I remember that. The word says. That Elohim will bring the council of the nations to what? Nothing. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. So we can stand in his grace for this hour and we can be a blessing to Israel. And I've learned that if we're a blessing to Israel, this is what the Lord will do with our ministry in the nations and blow life into it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's great. Yeah. Well, I know at this time, I think that there, I, I'm actually leaving to Israel 
in a in a few weeks. Good I'm for gonna, you. I'm going to spend 12 days there, um, and you know, a lot of us on the tour group, uh, there's a lot of people. This would might be their first uh, trip to Israel, and uh, I think a lot of a lot of people feel nervous, especially at this time. But um, when, when we talked to our tour guide, they said, please don't cancel because of fear. Uh, there have been so many people who have canceled uh, their tours. Uh, they're not going. And um, she's, uh, she's encouraged us to, to trust in the Lord, to stand with Israel, and to go and, and, and I guess be a part of what life is like for them every day. Like they face this war every day, but they can't freeze in fear. They have to continue living life. You have to continue going to school. You have to go to the shuk to get the, the food. You have to, you have to continue life as normal. Um, so how do we, you know, going is being a part of Israel, going to just, just going and showing up and blessing them and, um, you know, giving uh, any way we can, I think is going to be uh, sort of our contribution. And I, you know, I pray that our, our spirit and our hope and our joy helps encourage while we are there. But um, for you who are watching right now, and you know that the Holy Spirit's telling you to do something, and maybe it's to repent, maybe it's to pray and repent, maybe it's to get involved with some of these ministries Maybe it is to take a trip to Israel in, in these times. I don't know what it is, but uh, pray about it and say yes. The Holy Spirit is asking you to step out and do something that's in your power today. And maybe it's just to get over that depression. And maybe it's to put that smile on. Maybe it's to pick up your Bible. I don't know what it is, but uh, say yes, get involved and start aligning your heart with Israel. I think that's important. Well, I've got a word that speaks right into what you're saying from the word, from our Bibles. And it's the wicked flee when no one's pursuing, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. You know? Yeah. And, and so uh, there is a, uh, you know, you mentioned Texas, you know, there's a, like a Texas preacher guy who said it like this. He said, Christians are like tea. The hotter it gets, the better we are. <laughs> so truly for we who are in messiah yeshua for we who are in christ he's placed us here for this hour yes yes and certainly if we're in him we've been saved forgiven and that wickedness has been replaced with his righteousness you know, right so we have the lion of the tribe of Judah, Yehuda, in us. And now is our time not to shake off fear and uh, the things, the cares of this life that have us tangled up and to take up our positions regarding our identity in Messiah, our calling that he's given us the works of grace, he'll blow his life through by the Ruach HaKodesh to take us to the place where he put crown, He puts crowns on our heads when he takes us back to that place he's been preparing for us. And then we will return with him to take up our eternal positions in the kingdom of Messiah Yeshua. And so I'm so laser focused on that program. It's your kingdom come, your will be done in my life here on earth as it is in heaven. And I'll tell you what, that's what I call living. Yeah. You know? Amen. Amen. Well, Dove, it's been such an amazing conversation with you. It feels like, you know, it's it's nice that we, we have never met, but it's like talking to a brother. And uh, I, I feel like uh, it's it's we've known each other for a long time, even though we've only met today. And I hope the audience feels the same way. Oh, yes. um, may you close us with a word of prayer as we and pray for Israel during their they're tough times for us right now. And then yes. uh, we will uh, we'll wrap up the show. But thank you so much. Sure. It's been a blessing to be with you. Thank you for this opportunity. Great job. Uh, Holy Abba Father, B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we uh, enter into your gates with thanksgiving and, and your courts with praise. You're so good to us. You are the almighty God. You're not the some mighty you're the almighty. Amen. And 
we speak blessings in life for every viewer. Thank you that your grace meets us where we are, but it never leaves us there. May your grace touch everyone watching where they are and bring them onward, upward from faith to faith, strength to strength, and glory to glory. And we ask a special blessing uh, that this prayer would produce fruit for Israel. We pray that you would bless your people, Israel. We, we remind you of your covenant with Abraham, Yitzhak, the Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we know that you have a plan. We ask you to bring peace to Jerusalem, your city, Messiah Yeshua, our Lord Jesus, and this television program. Uh, we've stepped out in faith for this, and we thank you for the participation of Eric, uh, Light of the Southwest, uh, and GLC, and we thank you, and we ask that it, it would be a blessing to GLC, a blessing uh, to our viewers, and a blessing to Israel through our Israeli-believing partners. We thank you, Father, in Messiah Yeshua's name, and everyone who prayed in agreement, say it with me, said, Amen. 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 Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in with us today. If this message spoke to your heart, please like, share, subscribe, and also share this with all your friends. Somebody needs to hear this message. And uh, we look so forward, Dove, to having you back on. And we'll tune in next time. We'll see you later. Thank you, everyone. Shalom.